Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kevin with Mixed Coach. I had a question the other day from a friend of mine, a member of Mixed Coach member, mixedcoachmember.com. It's in the link is in the description. Anyway, he wanted to know how do you import a song to listen to a reference in Pro Tools. So I thought I would show you a couple of ways doing this specifically for you. You know who you are. And uh, so I thought I'd share a couple of tips with you of, of what I do and how I approach this. Now, there's a couple of ways. Well, first of all, let me say that you should, if you're not using a, rough, uh, a reference mix, you should be because your ears will acclimate to whatever it hears last. That's why your ears will, they'll adjust to whatever. Your ears are an amazing instrument. And the fact that they'll adjust if you're working with a great singer and you're really going for it, uh, before you know it, the thing that you considered awesome all ago is something that you think they make you do a little bit better this time. On the other hand, if you're working with a, a not so great singer and what they sang to begin with was, you know, really not good at all. Before you know it, if your heart's in the right place and you're trying to help them, you know what they're capable of and you say, you know what, that's great. Or I think I can do that better. So anyway, your ears will acclimate. And I even heard a story one time. I'll, I'll start off by telling this. Uh, I think it was CLA or Tom Lord Algae said in an interview that the first thing he does when he mixes in the morning is he gets a cup of coffee and he listens to Pyromania from Def Leppard. And that will get you pumped up to mix. It's a great mix. But what he's doing is he's kind of saying, okay, your your ears are kind of like zoning in. They're focusing in on what actually sounds really good because if you don't mix without a reference mix, you're kind of like shooting an arrow, a bow and arrow without a target. And who knows if you get there or not. So anyway, suffice it to say, use a reference mix. It will definitely help you. So so I'll go here and I'll show you what I typically do. I'm going to show you two ways that you can import a rough mix or a reference mix. Rough mix, reference mix are not the same thing. I just keep calling them that for some reason. A reference mix, okay? So I'm going to delete this one because I know that it's something that I, I was uh, practicing on a minute ago. So anyway, so this is from a session we did on Mix Coach Member called Black Dog. Uh, from a great singer-songwriter named Barry Gould. Thank you, Barry, for letting us use your amazing song called Black Dog. Uh, but we're going to import a reference mix in here now. This is a random refer reference mix. You're not going to hear this song on this tutorial, but I'm going to show you how to import a couple things. Here's way number one. The first and easiest way to do it is just to import audio. So go to File, Import, and then go to Audio. And then... Uh, you'll get the Pro Tools window, and we're going to import Baby, 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 which is a rough mix of something I did. If you notice, it's an MP3. It doesn't matter. Pro Tools will convert that to a format that it can play. It can only play, like if it's set up for Wave, it'll only play Wave. So it'll convert it to Wave for you. So now that we've got this Baby, Baby rough mix going, we hit Convert. And if you notice here, uh, we're applying sample rate because I think this is done at uh, 48 and I think this session is at 44.1. So we're applying sample rate conversion. So we're actually converting it from 48 to 44.1. And if we didn't have that, the song would come in a little, uh, what, fast? It would come in fast. It would, or no, it would come in, come in slow. But anyway, uh, so that's all looking right. You can actually listen to it by click and play here. But we're just going to hit done. And it's going to ask me next, where do you want this to be put? And I'm going to cover this again uh, in just a minute. But where do you want this to be put? So we want this to be in the audio file folder of this song. So that's what we're going to do. It's in the, and it'll pop up to whatever session you're in. It assumes that that's where you want to put. So we're going to hit open. The next question it's going to do is converting here. The next question it's going to ask is where do you want, how do you want to import this? Do you want it to be in the clip list? which is the regions bin over there on the right on the on the on this window here. Well, it won't let me change windows. But uh, uh, you want it to be a track, actually a track in here. And that's the actual that's what we want to do. And where do you want me to put it in the session, the beginning of the session or in the selection, wherever the cursor where you left the cursor? Or do you want me to spot it like you'll tell me in the next step? Where do you want this to go? We actually want this to be at session start. So I'm going to hit OK. And then there it is, just like that. I'm going to drag this from the bottom to the top where we can see uh, what my mix here. So this is the mix we just imported. Now here's an important thing. 
this is the region's bin that I was referring to a second ago. We want to make sure that we did, in fact, copy it into the audio folder because I, I'd rather check it twice and, and be right about it than to be surprised that the next time I open the session, a drive is not mounted and now I can't listen to my reference mix. So uh, what we want to do, I'm going to set this back to um, show and then right here, full path. This is probably the way you'll see it, just the, just the names of the regions. But we're going to hit the down arrow here, and we're going to go uh, show full path. And this will show you which drive it's on, which folder it's in, and then even right down to the audio folders, and then where it is. So, And you can do that by, if you press, the, if you just highlight the file that you just imported, it will highlight it in the regions bin. So it is, in fact, where we want it to be on drive one in Barry's folder, in Barry's session folder. Okay, so I'm going to delete this right now. I'm going to right click and hit delete, and I'm going to show you another way that you can do it that's actually pretty easy too. So we're not going to go to the menu. We're actually going to, I, I, want, to, I want to look at a, a preference first real quick under Pro Tools, Preferences. And if you look here under the Processing tab, you need to make sure that Automatically Copy Files on Import is checked because what this does is it forces Pro Tools to import a reference mix or a tambourine track or a new thing. It makes it go into the audio files folder so it keeps your session organized you want to make sure that that is checked okay so we hit okay it is checked and now the next step we want to do is I actually want to just move this over here and I want to just find a file on my hard drive here on this hard drive well it keeps going to the different I'm not editing this so I want to find a file on this hard drive let's just pull this over here to this page and that way we can defeat my computer and then I'm going to go up here to uh, Dropbox and I'm going to find this folder here now on this I'm going to hit command plus and get back to this window because this is the window I actually want to dra drag and drop this in okay so I'm gonna let's say for this one I'm going to pull baby 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 back in so I'm just going to grab this if you notice it's an mp3 also I'm going to pull it over here to the tracks lane here and I'm just, you notice it turns yellow just around the tracks lane I'm going to drop it right there and if you notice down here at the bottom I'll move this over so you can see it down here at the bottom is baby 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 we're going to drag it back up to the where the old one was at the very top there it is not quite far enough but there's the mix there and we want to make sure that when we do it this way you want to really make sure that you are forcing it to be in the audio file in the in the session so you don't want to lose it so again we've highlighted it it's there we verify that it's drive one and we are good to go and all is good with the world okay so now the question is how do you listen to files like this without them going back through your master bus so i'm just going to show you just a little bit about that <clears throat> this is uh from a template that i was giving away on mix coach member this is my mixing template that I that I use. And if you look over here to the right, I was going to explain this really quickly. I have uh, these mix buses. These are actual mix uh, master faders. So, and if you can tell because you can only give it one source. This is mix. This is the track. This is the TV, the split, acapella. I mix those every time I do it because... Those are stems that, that people tend to need. And they only, have, they only have a brick wall limiter at minus one. And if you notice, I'm not even doing a threshold there. It's just as a safety precaution. If you notice here, I'm doing most of my bus compression, bus EQ, everything that I do here on my uh, vocal master and my band master. And these are auxiliary inputs as well. But if you notice, the output of those go to dash mix over here on the left is dash mix and if you notice here on on this uh, lane here or this fader this is my monitor fader now I use a monitor fader because sometimes I want to listen to something different and all I have to do to listen to something different is change it you know to the track bus and that's what I'm listening to without affecting anything that's going to any one of these mixes I print all of these at once that in one pass 
Um, so, and this is the only thing that's going to my ma main output. This is the only thing that's going to my main monitor left and right. If I mute this, everything in the session goes blank. It, there's nothing there. But this a actually gives me an option to listen to a mix without it being affected. Also gives me a chance to look at my metering, my monitor uh, mono stereo. If I wanted to put a plug in here, this is what I usually do. I press the mono button here on the Brainworks BX meter, which I think is free. If not, it's really cheap. But this gives me my luffs, and it also allows me to mono it, and also allows me to listen to the stereo. But if I forget and leave that on, it's no big deal because I'm not printing the mix from this bus. This is just the one I'm listening on. Now, if I decide I want to try to put, say, an SSL bus compressor on it or something like that, and I like the way it sounds, all I have to do then is just pull it over to the mix bus which this, and then it would get printed, okay? So last thing I wanna show you is how do I listen to this import, this mix I just imported. Well, this, if you'll notice here, all of these mixes that, that I would listen to, these are going to virtual one and two. I'm using Apollo. So I'm gonna set this also to output, and it's going to be virtual one and two. Now I'm using an Apollo, and here's the Apollo. This is the console on the Apollo. And I've got, you know, there are more inputs that you can see on this. I've got it stripped down to where it's easy to see and easy to navigate because some of the stuff I'm not using. Virtual 1 and 2 I am because this is where my mixes and my reference mixes come back to so that I can listen to them on these speakers without anything from the master bus touching it. Not even a safety brick wall limiter. I don't want anything to hear. I want to hear what the mix actually sounds like coming from the producer, from the artist. So, um, so yeah, that's how I import reference mixes. This is two easy ways to do that. And then that's how I listen back and compare. Oh, let me show you one other thing. Now, if I was listening to this mix and I was actually A-B-ing the mix, what I would do is I would solo this. And then, so it's playing along with everything. Now, I've got a, I've got a, uh, control surface over here and I can actually solo if you notice here I can actually solo from my surface and I can also mute and this is what I'll do this is the way it is when I'm listening to the mix when I want to reference this I'll hit both of them at the same time I hit the solo and the mute at the same time and it allows me to easily go between mixes and and really compare very quickly whether this reference mix is uh, whether my mix is uh, stacking up to the reference mix. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. I hope you guys uh, found something you could use out of here. If you did, please like this video, share it, and uh, comment. I'd love to see your comments. And uh, if you get a chance, check out mixcoachmember.com. And uh, that's where you can find some awesome songs like this to mix. And we do it every month. So anyway, hey, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you found it helpful, and I will see you in the next video. All right, talk to you soon.